So chapter two, summarizing data. Throughout this chapter, we're going to look at different ways of, now more ways of summarizing your data, describing what's happening with your data that you got from your sample. Okay, we're going to look at a couple more graphs. We're also going to look at some values that will help describe the center and spread and what can an outlier do to those values and what you should watch for. Okay. So in 2.1, we're looking at two-way tables. Okay. Organizing your data into a table could be very useful. Usually from that table, is then you start putting together your graph. But a table is going to be a nice way to organize it. And a two-way table, two, it says called two-way because there's two variables. So the situation we're going to look at, consider three political viewpoints, liberal, moderate, conservative. How do you think the three groups differ in viewpoints about how the government spends money? So the two variables we're looking at, one is political viewpoint, and it has three categories to it. And we also want to look at how people think about spend, the government is spending the money. Okay? So there's our two variables for our two-way table. So I, if we, let's imagine we ran a survey, and one table I found about this information is right here. Two-way table, we have our one variable, political viewpoint up the top. We have our too little, about right, too much going down the side, and this is going to be spending on the environment. Okay, so we have our two variables. The counts are inside. These aren't percentages. These are counts. Totals going down the bottom, going down the side, and a grand total of 646. Okay. So two-way table, two variables. The columns represent the explanatory variable, and the rows represent the response. So we're thinking that your political viewpoint, that might have an effect on how you think we're, not spe we're spending on the environment. Okay? So that's our thought here for explanatory versus response. Now a couple things you can do here. Looking at proportions can help. Okay? Looking at numbers, yeah, just looking at the counts, you might think that they're even, you might think that they're bigger, enough, bigger than one another. Looking at the percentages sometimes can be a little helpful. So what I'm looking at here is find the proportion of responses that said too little, just right, and too much. So I'm looking at each row here and finding that proportion. So I'm going down to my totals and dividing by my grand total. 398 divided by 646. 198, 646, and 50, 646. And if I look at those proportions, I have it as 0 0.616, 0 0.307, 0 0.077. So you can see, a little, well over half say too little, okay, about 30, 31% say just right, and 7%, less than 10% are saying too much. Now what you need to be careful about is, we have three different categories for our explanatory. Are those categories equal? Are they broken up equally? Okay. So what we're looking at is just the responses, not even thinking about which category of the explanatory they fall in. But that's how all of our responses fell. This is considered marginal distribution, proportional breakdown of its categories. Okay. So right there is how our response is broken down proportional. So now I'm asking you what proportion of liberals fall into too little, about right, and too much. So now we're looking at just this row of liberals. So we're going to concentrate on that 155, and we're going to look at too little, about right, and too much for each one. So again, we're just going to do some quick division. 127 divided by 155. 27 divided by 155, and 1 divided by 155. And if I'm looking at those, 0 0.819, 0 0.174, and 0 0.006. So if you're looking at just the liberal category, by a good amount, too little is the highest proportion. 81 or 82 percent are saying we spend too little on the environment. Less than 1% is saying too much. So the liberals are definitely a little lopsided here. Okay? So if we were to find all the proportions for this whole table, they could, 
A might give us an idea of for each explanatory. These are called conditional distributions. Okay, the proportion of the responses for a particular category. So we broke it down liberals for that one, and we saw what that breakdown was. And we saw that liberals by a lot think we spend too little. Okay. So here's the breakdown overall. The liberals here, we just saw those values, and I also did the moderate and conservative. And what I want you to notice for the conditional probability, the proportions, we have each one okay, should add up to one. Because okay? that's the total, the whole category there for that explanatory all put together should add up to one. Now these numbers, right, you can see 0.819 compared to 0.619 compared to 4, uh, 0.479. There is some big difference there, but sometimes look at numbers if they're closer together, they're a little harder to see. A good graph you can put together with conditional probability is called a segment bar graph. And what it does is takes the segments for too little and proportion, takes the proportion and graphs it. So now you can see there's our 82% for liberals who say too little. And you can see the difference, how much bigger this section is for too little compared to the moderates, compared to the conservatives. Okay? And each total bar should go up from zero to 100%, okay? Because that's what we had it add up. Each one of those columns added up to a one, well, which is on be 100%. So this is a nice way to see the difference between, instead of looking at the numbers, which sometimes it's hard to tell how far apart these numbers are, now you can look at the bar and see, okay, there's a big chunk difference here, big chunk difference there, okay? Now, one thing a segment bar graph should be able to help you do is be able to tell if there are independent variables or not. So let's look at two different segment bar graphs. We have our environmental spending here. That's the one we just looked at. And now here's space spending. How much is our government spending on space? We still have liberals, moderate conservatives, and it's the percentage. Again, we have too little, about right, too much. And we can see, in this case, the too littles are all there at the bottom. The too muches are all at the top, much bigger this time. Okay? Now, comparing these two graphs, okay, and to see if they are independent or not, this is what you want to look for. Two categorical variables are said to be independent if the conditional distributions of one variable are identical for every category of the other variable. Kind of wordy, but what that's saying is if you look at the variable for too much, about right, or too little, each category here for liberal, moderate, conservative, they use the word identical. That's kind of dangerous. They have to be similar to each other. Okay, so if I'm looking at liberals, moderate conservatives, I think there's a big difference, especially in the too little. Huge difference here, and then it drops a good amount as we go over from moderate to conservative. Same thing for about right. There's only a small section here for liberals. That section gets much bigger for moderate, much bigger for conservatives. I would not consider those similar to each other. This would not be an independent variables. Okay, over here for political viewpoints and space spending, okay, for the two littles, I'm not, I don't really have to move that far from each other. They are pretty close to each other. Same thing for the too much, same thing for the about right. None of them are equal, they're not identical, but they are fairly similar to each other, okay? Each section, the percentages are fairly similar to each other. And if you would estimate the amount for those, they're not that far off from each other, okay? So I would say that political viewpoint and spending on space, how people think the government's spending on space, those would be independent variables, okay? They are similar enough for me to say those two variables are independent. No matter your political viewpoint, it probably doesn't have an effect on what section or how you feel about too much, about right, or too little on uh, government spending for the space, okay? If the conditional distributions are different, the variables are said to have an association. So that would be this over here, okay? If you're a liberal, there's a much better chance that you think we spend too little on the environment than if you're a conservative. If you're a conservative, there's a much bigger chance of falling into one of the two other groups, either the about right or too much. 
Since there's a difference here, I'm not saying there is a relationship. I want to stay away from saying they're dependent variables, but I do think there's a relationship. Your political viewpoint and how you think we're spending on the environment, there's a relationship there. One, view, one political viewpoint is not the same or not similar than the other ones. Okay? So this is one thing you're going to be asked to do. Determine if they are independent variables or not. Okay? And again, try and stay away from dependent. Set using the word dependent. Use association or relationship. I would, would prefer those terms. Okay? So that's the first part of 2.1. There is a second video that talks a little bit about the Simpsons paradox.